everyone, this is Jay Kalpana here. In this video, we are going to solve a differential equation from higher order linear differential equations. So, let's get going. Problem. Solve d squared plus 5d plus 4 into y equals to 2 sin x. Firstly, let's find order and degree of the given differential equation. Identify the highest derivative here. d squared is the highest derivative. So, our order will be 2. And... The highest power of the highest derivative is a degree degree is 1. Or just write the given differential equation as d squared y plus 5 dy plus 4y equals to 2 sin ax. We know that d is a differential operator. Then d squared will be d squared by dx squared. Now we can write d squared y as d squared y by dx squared. Plus 5 into dy as dy by dx plus 4y equals to 2 sin ax. Right? Here the highest derivative is d squared y by dx squared. So our order will be 2. And the highest power of the highest derivative is a degree degree is 1. Now coming to the problem. Given differential equation d squared plus 5d plus 4 into y equals to 2 sin ax, right, which is an operator form. f of d into y equals to q where f of d equals to d square plus 5d plus 4 and q equals to 2 sin x. Now we need to find the general solution to the given equation which is given by y equals to yc plus yt. Here yc is a complementary function. We will find yc using the rules of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous equation. Simply by taking r equals to 0, we will get f of d into y equals to 0, which is a homogeneous equation to this non-homogeneous equation. And we will find yp using 1 by f of d into q. So, firstly, let's find complementary function using the auxiliary equation. The auxiliary equation of f of d into y equals to 0 is f of m equals to 0 where f of m equals to we have f of d equals to d square plus 5d plus 4 right. Let's replace differential operator by m then we will get f of m equals to m square plus 5m plus 4. Then our auxiliary equation becomes m squared plus 5m plus 4 equals to 0. Now we can split 5m as 4m plus m and last term remains the same. Now take m common from the first two terms. We will get m times m plus 4 and the next term, next two terms will be the same. You notice we are having m plus 4 common in both the terms, right? So let's take m plus 4 common. We have m plus 4 common in both the terms. So we are taking m plus 4 common from these two terms and we will get m plus 4 into m plus 1. Now equate each factor to 0. From m plus 4 equals to 0, we will get m equals to minus 4. From m plus 1 equals to 0, we will get m equals to minus 1. Then, m equals to minus 4 minus 1 are the roots to the to our auxiliary equation. Therefore, 
m equals to minus 4 minus 1 are the roots of our auxiliary equation which are real and distinct or we can say real and different. If two roots say m1 and m2 are real and distinct then we will write complementary function as one constant into e power 1 root into x plus the other constant into e power the other root into x. Now our complementary function looks like y c equals to c1 one constant into e power 1 root into x plus the other constant into e power the other root into x. Then y c equals to c1 e power minus 4x plus c2 e power minus x. Now let's find particular integral. Particular integral is given by 1 by f of d into q. We have f of d d squared plus 5 d plus 4 into q 2 sine ax. Here 2 is a constant so let's write it outside. We will get 2 into 1 by f of d into sine ax. So the terms under bracket looks like 1 by f of d into sine ax right. Now d square is given by minus a square here also we have for a equals to a so just d square is given by minus a square or minus a square we need to find what happens if we replace d square by minus a square in the denominator always remember that the denominator must be non-zero what happens if the denominator becomes zero we'll get something like this 1 by 0 into sine ax 1 by 0 is undefined, so the total term becomes undefined, okay? Since 1 by 0 is undefined, so total term becomes undefined. So, always remember that the denominator must be non-zero. So, let's see what happens if we replace d squared by minus a squared in the denominator. I'll just take the denominator part and replace d squared by minus a squared. Then, I'll get... 4 minus a square plus 5d or 5d the term involving d plus constants. Okay. Which is non-zero. So the denominator is non-zero by replacing d square by minus a square. So what we can do here? We can just replace d square by minus a square. Then our yp becomes two into one by just replace d square by minus a square. We'll get minus a square plus five d plus four into sine x. This becomes 2 into 1 by 4 minus a square plus 5d into sine ax or simply you can write the denominator as 5d plus 4 minus a square into sine ax. Just consider this term as constant, okay? Now we are having 5d term with d plus constant term. So what we can do is if we change the plus sign we'll get minus sign right. Change plus sign as minus then we'll get 5 minus or 4 minus a square. Now multiply and divide with 5d minus 4 minus a square to this fraction 
into sine ax. Now this becomes 2 into 1 into 5d minus 4 minus a square is 5d minus 4 minus a square by a plus b into a minus b. 5d plus 4 minus a square into 5d minus 4 minus a square into sine x. This becomes 2 into 5d minus 4 minus a square by this of a plus b into a minus b form, right? So, we can write the denominator in a square minus b square form. We will get f 5d whole square minus 4 minus a square whole square into sine ax. This becomes 2 into 5d minus of 4 minus a square by 5d whole square is 5 square 25 into d square minus a minus b whole square. Again, we can expand this using a minus b whole square formula. a square plus b square minus 2ab will get 4 square plus a square whole square minus 2 into 4 into a square, right? Into sine ax. Which is equals to 2 into 5d minus 4 minus into minus plus a square by we don't need to write like this, okay? Here we have considered 4 minus a square as constant, right? Let's leave like this. Now this becomes 2 into 5d minus 4 minus a square by 25d square minus of 4 square 16 plus a square whole square is above 4. See, a square whole square can be written as a power 2 into 2, a power 4, or a square whole square can be written as a square into a square, which is equal to a power 2 plus 2, which is equal to a power 4, right? Minus 2 pose 8 into a square into sine ax. Which is equals to 2 into 5d minus of 4 minus a square by 25d square minus 16 minus into plus minus a power 4 minus into minus plus 8a square into sine x. Again, d square appears in the denominator. We have to remember that the denominator must be non-zero. Take the denominator part. And replace d square by minus a square. See, you are having a, right? So, we will replace d square by minus a square and see what happens to the denominator part. We will get 25 into minus a square minus 60 minus a power 4 plus 8a square, which is equal to minus 25a square minus 16 minus a power 4 plus 8 a square minus 25 a square plus 8 a square is minus 17 a square minus 16 minus a power 4 which is non-zero right so we'll get denominator part non-zero by replacing d square by minus a square Replace 
d square by minus a square that is b comes 2 into 5d minus of 4 minus a square by 25 into d plus d square by minus a square minus 16 minus a square plus 8a square into sin ax which is equal to 2 into 5d minus of 4 minus a square by 25 into minus a square is minus 25a square minus 16 minus this is a power 4 right not a square plus 8 a square into sine x this becomes 2 into 5d minus of 4 minus a square by minus 25a square plus 18a square is minus 17a square minus 16 minus a power 4 right into sine x Let's take minus common from all the three terms of denominator. We'll get 2 into 5d minus of 4 minus a square by minus of 17 a square minus 16 minus a power 4 into sine x. Now let's take this minus outside. We'll get or just you can write this as minus of 5d minus 4 minus a square by here you'll get plus right after taking minus common you'll get minus of 17 a square plus 16 plus a power 4 right you get a power 4 plus 17 a square plus 16 into sine x right here this is of 1 by minus 1 form right 1 by minus 1 can be written as minus 1 by 1 which is minus 1 right this is how it comes now bring this minus outside the bracket you will get minus 2 into 5d minus 4 minus a square by a power 4 plus 17 a square plus 16 into sine a x. This becomes minus 2 into 5d into sine a x minus 4 minus a square into sin ax by denominator part a power 4 plus 17 a square plus 16. We know that d is a differential operator. Replace d by d by dx here. We will get minus 2 into 5 into d by dx of sine ax. Here we need to find derivative of sine ax with respect to x. Minus 4 minus a square into sine ax by the denominator part remains the same. This equals to minus 2 into 5 into derivative of sine ax is 1 by a cos ax sorry not 1 by a it's derivative right so you'll get a into cos ax only integral sine ax will be minus 1 by a cos ax but in case of derivative we'll get a cos ax right so a cos ax is correct minus 4 minus a square into sine ax by a power 4 plus 17 a square plus 16. Finally, a yp will be minus 2 into 5a cos ax minus of 
4 minus a square into sin ax by a power 4 plus 17 a square plus 16. Now we can write the general solution to our problem. The general solution is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Then y equals to c, yc, c1 e power minus 4x plus c2 e power minus x plus yp is minus 2 into 5a cos ax minus of 4 minus a square into sin ax by a power 4 plus 17 a square plus 16. This completes the problem. So we have seen a problem from higher order linear differential equations in this video. Hope you will understand. We will see you in the next video. Until then. Bye bye.